take us through some of the more advanced controls of your Nissan LEAF as well as its media centre functions. To start with, I'm going to go through some of the driver facing controls. Um, starting with the steering wheel controls, we've got all your cruise control and speed limiter settings here on the right hand side. Uh, this button here on the left, that is for activating your speed limiter. This one is for activating your cruise control and both are controlled in very much the same way. Going back to the speed limiter, you press your button, um, you use this little toggle switch here to set it. So if you pull it down, it will set to its starting speed, which as the car stationary is 20. If you were driving along, it would set to whatever is, the, is closest to the speed you're driving. Then you can increase or decrease the speed limit setting. Uh, cancel and cancels it. Um, and then if you tilt this up, that makes it resume. Uh, and you do the, the cruise control in much the same way. Cruise control button, click to set, adjust to where you want. Again, cancel cancels it, resume resumes it. Just below all the cruise control buttons is this eco button just here. Um, you activate it by pressing that and that puts the car into its eco mode, which is an efficient driving mode um, at the expense of the performance of the car and some of the uh, oomph out of the, um, the heating and aircon system. On the left of the steering wheel, you've got your media controls. Um, the source button at the top enables you to sort of just swap between radio and CD or auxiliary input, for example. Um, the little toggle switch here means you can sort of scroll between radio stations or scroll between tracks. You've got your volume controls, uh, pretty self-explanatory. Um, little phone symbol, um, you press that to receive or hang up on calls once you've got a, a phone Bluetooth connected to the car. Uh, and last of all, down the bottom here, you've got your voice activated controls. Um, you give that a press, it gives you the option to use the voice activation system if you're brave enough. Um, in theory, you can ask the car to phone, uh, phone certain contacts or navigate certain destinations. The screen display, the centre of it, is controlled by this cluster of buttons over here. Um, the button with the squares will scroll between different displays, so it starts off with charge time, then you give some fuel economy figures, um, the percentage of charge left in the battery, the average speed, um, sort of trip information, and then your uh, settings. When you're in settings, um, the little dot button will scroll down the different options. There's quite a few things there. A lot of these are at, you can access through the media center anyway. But if we go all the way down, something fairly harmless like effects, you then press the square button to select. And in here, you can then just scroll down to have different sound effects for when you turn the car off and on. The trip button, um, you hold and press that to reset the trip computer. Um, and then this one here alternate, it alters the brightness of the, the behind the steering wheel dash display. Um, so you can use that button to then press it up and down to get it to the brightness level you would like. Yeah, I'm going to scroll it back to the um, state of battery charge. I always find that the most helpful uh, display to have on the screen because I find battery percentage perhaps a more accurate gauge to how far the car's going to go than the range predictor. Um, once you get to know your car. You've got some other buttons on the right here, just below the ones we just went through. Uh, this one opens up the charging flap. Uh, this button here will lock your charge lead in, so you're um, charging in a, uh, somewhere publicly and you want the cable to be non-removable. Uh, just click that. Um, if you've got a charging timer set on the car, um, say for charging out cheap overnight electricity and you want to skip it because you're charging during the day for some reason, you press that, that will turn it off. Uh, you've got pedestrian warning sound, of course, on the leaf at low speeds. This button turns it off, however, um, I wouldn't really do that. Um, if you've got a Tecna, this is a nice button, puts on your heated steering wheel. Now, other than that, this is for your traction control, which you would only turn off in the rarest of circumstances, um, say getting the car out of the mud or trying to drive very, very slowly through some difficult, slippy conditions. Uh, briefly, before we move on to the media centre, I'll just quickly run through the heating and aircon system controls. Uh, press auto to turn it on. Uh, you've got these buttons here to turn the temperature up and down. I've got it set for about 20 degrees. Um, the mode button here changes the direction in which the heat is going. And it's displayed on the screen there. There we go, we have feet and windscreen. Um, fan speed. 
uh, and then you've got your front screen and rear screen demisters. Remember to turn those off when you get the car to temperature to preserve energy. Next is the uh, Nissan Leafs touchscreen media centre. We'll start off with the media controls, which are obviously controlled by these buttons down the side of the screen here, as well as accessed via the audio button there. Um, you press audio, you can bring up radio stations, for example, or your USB stick if you've got one uh, plugged in, things like that. Um, you know, CD button there, the uh, Nissan Leaf has a CD player. You access it by pressing that open tilt button. CD drive is behind there. Press that to close it. Um, to store something like a radio station, when you have your radio station on here playing, someone previously liked Planet Rock, um, to store it in one of the presets, just press and hold that number, and that will become uh, a pre-programmed number for that radio station. You click on auxiliary, that will bring us, well, yeah, brought up a USB stick, but equally you can have an auxiliary input for uh, an iPod, um, and alternatively you have your Bluetooth devices as well. Uh, next step is going to be pairing our phone to the Nissan Leaf. To access the phone menu, you click phone on there. Obviously we've got no phone paired at the moment, uh, but you've got uh, an option saying pair phone. You click that, uh, and then use your mobile phone and its Bluetooth settings. So the phone's just having a look. It's actually Reese's phone here we're using today. You're looking for my leaf. It takes a little while for that to come up. You click that. Ask to pair. Pass keys OK. Click OK on your phone. Click yes on there and the two will pair. Yeah, next we'll move on to the Nissan Leafs inbuilt sat nav. Access the sat nav through the button that says Navi is there. Um, to navigate to address you click new address and then enter the postcode. For argument's sake we will put in here VA3 for SL and you click list then you click OK and then you click start. To set your home locations, actually in a different menu in the Leaf, you click settings and then it brings up some more menus, uh, one of which is navigation and it's got some different settings in. Um, and if you click on address book, it has home location and you just put that into that in as a new address, just like we did programming in the sat nav for the original destination. And then that sets here as our home destination. Okay. Uh, there's also some useful bits in the settings section. Um, if you go into guidance, um, this is where you can turn the SatNav's guidance voice off and on. I personally prefer to have it off. Ironically, it tells you it's turning itself off. Um, also, route calculation criteria, that, that's quite um, useful because obviously uh, the car's currently set to fast. However, you might choose to go by the shortest route, uh, for example. Under new destination as well, obviously this is where we program in the address to start off with. There are some other useful bits. So it comes up with a, a directory of local points of interest, which is useful. Uh, and obviously it comes with a, a directory of charge points that can also be very handy. And if I go back to the actual map screen, there's another menu on here, map menu, and in there, there are map settings which you can use to change the uh, the layout. Uh, this menu button is kind of a sort of a quick access sort of favorites uh, section. So you can have different things stored on there, like your home destination and history, well, your radio stations, etc. And if you feel so inclined, you can also edit the order in which things go by saying edit menu. Eventually it will bring up the screen and then you can just move things around, hold and press it and you can then theoretically move it up a spot. Another similar not terribly useful button is the uh, status button 
uh, which brings up just another different display screen where it shows whatever's playing through the media center. And then by pressing status again, you can scroll through different things at the bottom there. Final icon on the touch screen is the settings button. Lots of things in there. Uh, a lot of them are duplicates of things you can do elsewhere with the other buttons and things and other menus on the car. But we'll just go through them. Obviously Bluetooth is just another place to access pairing your phone. Uh, navigation. It's got some different uh, navigation settings. Um, uh, display. You can alter the brightness and things like that in the uh, on, on your media center display box you can also do that by this button just here um, clock there you go that's how you set the clock um, I normally have it set to auto and just leave it to it um, phone will then access your, uh, your, your kind of caller register and things like that sound is useful um, this is obviously where you can adjust the you know the, you know, the bass and treble settings, etc., for um, for your sound system, volumes and beeps, volume adjustments for all sorts of things. Uh, we can scroll down here as well. Some buttons. So I've got buttons beeps set to on, but I can turn that off, for example. Um, some other stuff over here as well. You've got Nissan Connect. So if you're setting up the app, the Nissan Connect app. Um, your access bits in there. Um, comfort relates to kind of interior lighting, things like that. The very last thing I'm going to go through now is the blue zero emissions bump, uh, which is where a lot of the interesting EV related functions are. Now, first off is energy information. Uh, this brings up a variety of kind of consumption based statistics. If you like your figures, you can find them in here. Not much in there because we've just reset it. But uh, yeah, like I say, if you like, like figures, seeing how well you're driving, you'll find them in there. Driving range, if I press that, it takes a little while for the screen to load. But this will give um, a, a range prediction of how far the car thinks you can go, where it thinks you will get to. Let me zoom in a little bit. So the, 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 the whiter circle is the limits to which the car recommends you should sort of stop, stop and charge. So that's how far it thinks it's going to be able to get based upon its current range prediction. Nearby stations brings up a list where you can search for nearby charging stations for your car, either near to where you are at the moment or your destination or somewhere you're going. Um, update stations just updates that list. Um, now we're getting some stuff that's actually useful and interesting. Um, charging timer. Um, this is where you will uh, set a, a timer profile for your car. So you've got an overnight cheap electricity rate, you just want the, the car to um, charge then. This is where you'll program it in. So you click edit set schedule, click on, put the start time there, put the finish time there, decide which days you're gonna have, have it charging then, perhaps the weekend you'll charge in the day instead, and then click save. You can also do it for a, a second charge time if you needed to. Climate control timer, exactly the same process again. Um, click edit schedule, Program in exactly as you did before, you can do two separate settings and that will turn the heating and air con system on uh, so as to warm up the car before you get uh, get into it. Um, Nissan Connect TV um, is where you can set up and change things related to um, the Nissan Connect app um, should you decide to have that set up. If you do, uh, I won't run through the, the process now. Uh, however, in all the handover packs for all our cars, we have a pre-printed guide which explains how to get the app set up. And the very last button, zero emission settings, um, a few bits in there. Um, the most useful setting in it is setting the, um, the heater setting for your car's preconditioning. So you can set it to heat to whatever time you, whatever temperature you like. Here we've sat 21 degrees. It's worth noting that actually the car will only precondition um, when it's plugged into your charge point at home. I hope that was helpful. I must admit the Nissan Leaf system is not the, the easiest of systems to use so I, hopefully I've covered it sort of well enough without going into too much depth. We will over, be, over time be adding some smaller sort of bite-sized videos to our video library. Uh, but thank you very much for watching and of course do get in touch if you have any further questions.